Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm sure most of us are aware of the common culprits that can send you know, your blood pressure soaring and make it a real challenge to get it under control. You now we know of excess salt, we know of excess alcohol, and of course the ever-present dangers of smoking. Now these are the usual suspects that your doctor has probably consistently highlighted and for good reason because they play a significant role in your cardiovascular health. However, beyond these widely recognized factors, there's a lesser discussed set of behaviors and lifestyle elements that can equally impede effective blood pressure management. Now, I must admit this may not always be front page news, but their impact can be profound. So in this video, I want to share five of such factors and hopefully if any of them applies to you, you can take steps to make changes. All right, so let's start with the first one, which might make you laugh, but it's serious and it's important. That is holding your pee. Now, how often do you hold it because you're in a meeting, you are stuck in traffic, or you're just too busy? You know, I have personally been guilty of this when I worked in the busy retail uh, community pharmacy. The shifts were long, the store was busy, and I found myself holding it for way too long. Now, the problem is when your bladder is full, it puts pressure on the nearby blood vessels and can temporarily raise your blood pressure by about 10 to 15 points. But here's the, here's the real problem. If you are constantly ignoring your body signals, you are training yourself to live in a state of chronic low-level stress. Your sympathetic nervous system, that is your fight or flight response, stays slightly activated when you're uncomfortable. Over time, this can contribute to sustained higher blood pressure. Plus, holding urine regularly can lead to bladder and kidney issues that indirectly affect blood pressure. Simple solution, listen to your body. When nature calls, just answer and go. The next one is eating late or late night eating. Whether it's a late dinner or that midnight snack, late eating can mess with your blood pressure in unexpected ways. So your, your, your blood pressure naturally follows a 24 hour rhythm, something we call the circadian rhythm, typically dropping by 10 to 20% during sleep. Now this is called dipping and it's crucial for cardiovascular health. Now when you eat late, especially large meals or high sodium foods, your body has to work harder to digest, which can uh, prevent this natural blood pressure drop while you're sleeping. Studies show that people who eat their largest meal within three hours of bedtime have higher nighttime blood pressure and are more likely to be non-dippers, meaning their blood pressure doesn't drop properly during the night or during sleep. This puts extra strain on the heart and blood vessels. And to make matters even worse, you are more likely to gain weight if you're a late eater, which hopefully I don't need to remind you that is one of the biggest risk factors for high blood pressure. So best practice is to try and finish eating at least three hours before bedtime. Now let's continue with something I believe most of us may be guilty of, that is prolonged sitting. Now I know people, some of you may think that, hey, I work out every day, so I'm fine. But here's the kicker. Even if you're hitting the gym regularly, sitting for eight hours straight is still wreaking havoc on your blood pressure. So here's the deal. When you sit for extended periods, your blood flow slows down. Your muscles, especially your calf muscles, don't contract to help pump blood and your body starts producing less nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide is what keeps the blood vessels flexible, helping it to dilate and to keep it healthy. Studies show that people who sit for more than eight hours daily generally have a higher risk of developing high blood pressure. Now, I covered this in detail in a recent video, so I'll put a link to that particular video uh, in the description. But as a quick summary, in that video, I go over some practical ways to mitigate this, like taking the stairs, you know, pacing during phone calls, or trying a standing desk uh, for part of the day. Check out that video, the link is gonna be in the description. The next probable factor is lack of quality sleep. Now you might be getting your seven to eight hours, but are you really getting quality sleep? Poor sleep can be very detrimental for your blood pressure and here's why. During sleep, your body produces hormones that help regulate blood pressure. When your sleep is fragmented or shallow, you miss out on these crucial repair hours. Your body also produces more stress hormones like cortisol, which directly raises your blood pressure. Sleep apnea is another major culprit here. Now, those brief breathing interruptions, they don't just make you tired, they create mini stress responses that spike your blood pressure multiple times per night. You know, even sleeping in a room that's either too hot, too cold, 
or too noisy can prevent you from reaching those deep sleep stages. I have a few videos covering this in detail as well, so be sure to check it out in the description after you finish watching this video. Now let's talk about over-the-counter medication use. Now this is huge because I noticed that a lot of people do not pay particular attention to this. Let's start with pain relievers like NSAIDs, which includes uh, ibuprofen, naproxen, and aspirin among others. Now these can raise blood pressure by affecting your kidney's ability to regulate sodium and water. Now don't get me wrong, an occasional Advil or Aleve is not the end of the world, but regular use can cause the body to retain sodium and water and consequently elevate your blood pressure. Then we have decongestants containing pseudoephedrine or phenylephrine, which literally constrict your blood vessels. I mean, that's just how they work. So unfortunately, they just don't target your stuffy nose, but in the process, they also constrict your blood vessels and raise your blood pressure. And also let's not forget the natural or herbal stuff which because they have the tag of being natural we tend to forget that natural doesn't necessarily mean safe or appropriate for you in this context so i can think of things like uh, st john's wort uh, and black licorice or lic licorice root tea that some people often take for digestive health now the scary part is that these effects can be cumulative meaning regular use over weeks months can lead to sustained higher blood pressure so the pro tip here is that always read labels if you're taking any medication regularly uh, even over the counter ones actually let me say especially over the counter ones talk to your pharmacist or doctor about potential blood pressure effects so let me ask which one are you guilty of i mentioned mine i said holding my pee for too long was what i was guilty of when i went as a community pharmacist which one is yours let me know in the comment section and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you learned something today stay blessed and catch you on the next video